Hello and welcome to the series of instructional videos for the third year analytical chemistry labs. I'm Dr. Robin Studley and this video will be about the instrumental setup for chemiluminometry. This experiment uses two different methods and instrumental setups. This one is the manual injection and this one is the flow injection analysis or FIA. Let's take a look at the manual injection setup first. Here's the cell compartment. Inside is a cuvette and a stir bar. The stir plate is placed underneath the cell compartment to enable the stirring. Two of the three reagents, hydrogen peroxide and luminol, are pre-mixed here. Your sample is injected into the cuvette through this small opening in the cover. When the sample is incorporated into the reagent mixture, a chemiluminescence reaction occurs, producing products that are in the excited state. When the molecules relax back down to the ground state, photons are emitted. Some of the photons produced by the reaction travel through this metal tube, which has a focusing lens in it here. This is what the focusing lens looks like. The photons continue through the tube until they reach an optical filter. The bandpass filter has a maximum transmission at 460 nanometers, the wavelength of the emitted photons for the chemiluminescence reaction. The optical filter looks like a mirror because it reflects most wavelengths. It transmits only in the range of 450 to 470 nanometers, reflecting everything else. The transmitted light is detected by the photomultiplier tube, or PMT, that is directly behind the optical filter. The PMT has two connections. One of them supplies high voltage to the PMT, while the other takes the signal from the PMT to the computer. It's important to note that when the sample is injected into the cell compartment, the voltage power supply is on, but when cleaning the cuvette, the power supply must be turned off to prevent damage to the PMT. Excessive light intensity on an activated PMT will permanently reduce its sensitivity. Next we'll look at the setup for flow injection analysis. The sample and reagents are pumped into the instrument through these inlet tubes. Here, we're animating the pumping of colored solutions so you can see what's happening. However, in the experiment, the solutions are colorless. When the injection loop is in the load position, hydrogen peroxide is filling the sample loop and any excess comes out as waste. In the inject position, water carries the peroxide to the reaction cell. In both positions, the luminol and sample are directly carried to the reaction cell. There are three tubes connected to the reaction cell. One carries luminol and chromium solution premixed together. One carries peroxide, and the last is a return line for the waste. The inside of this box is basically empty. It contains a black cloth to block any stray light that enters through the hole at the bottom, and a metal plate that has a spiral-shaped glass coil on it. This spiral coil acts as the cell compartment. The top and bottom tubes carry their reagents into the coil, while the middle tube carries the waste out of the coil. The reagents mix in the coil and the chemiluminescence reaction occurs. The spiral coil is placed directly in front of the detector to capture as many photons as possible. The detector in this setup is again a photomultiplier tube. I hope this video has been useful for you. If you have any questions, please direct them to myself or your TA. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.